This lecture is about asexual reproduction. It is um, a form of reproduction that is rarely talked about um, when we're in the subject of reproduction. This video that's called Cells Are Amazing, we're going to look at it in class because I don't want the video to go too long. Um, but we are going to be learning all about the cell, all about all the different organelles and the processes that our cells go through in order to maintain our body's um, homeostasis. So um, yeah, let's get going. So some benefits of asexual reproduction are going to be, um, first of all, asexual reproduction is very efficient, meaning there's not a lot of errors that happen. Asexual reproduction is just the splitting of an organ, I mean an organism, um, into two. Um, it's fast, it's efficient, and uh, it doesn't rely on outside forces. An example of things that go through asexual reproduction are um, some plants. Some plants are sexual and asexual. Asexual means without sex. Um, and what it does is like a plant will grow, a uh, sprout, a new... Um, bud and that will turn into a root and eventually that can grow into a new plant. Um, bacteria go through asexual reproduction all the time. There's no outside forces. Um, the organisms don't need to find a mate. So asexual is not male and female. It's just not really having any sperm and egg involved. Okay, budding is a type of, binary, of um, asexual reproduction. And um, basically, just like this picture, it's a picture of a hydra, and its offspring grows off of its body until it gets to a certain age, and it'll break off and become its own organism. Fragmentation. Um, this is the planaria, or flatworm, and what happens is um, the fragmentation means that the organism can break apart and form two new organisms. Um, and if you look at it here, different parts can form into new organisms eventually. It'll grow new parts. Um, and this is the same picture of the same um, situation that can happen with um, a planaria, and that's called fragmentation. Spore production is basically when an organism needs to send its um, offspring far away. So spores are most likely carried um, through the wind and it's a production of small seeds to be taken away um, or eaten by another organism. It lands and then it grows. Mushrooms have a lot of fern, have a lot of um, spores and so do fern. Um, so do fungus. A mushroom is a fungus. You'll see these gills. And the gills underneath there are little stripes, and they are where the spores exist. If you look at a if you look at a fern plant, underneath the fern is where the spores are produced, and the spores actually um, will be released. Or uh, a banana slug could come and eat these spores, and then once it defecates, then it can release those spores onto the land that it slides across. Binary fission. Um, bacterial cells are going to divide they can make two it's very simple the DNA is split in half the offspring are identical to the parent so we've got um, the bacterial cell this is the nucleoid region plasma membrane cell membrane we've got probably some ribosome and some cytoplasm in there anyway so the DNA began to split cross wall forms and the cell actually separates resulting in two new bacterial cells because of binary fission. Okay, so let's look at the cell cycle. Cell cycle has, um, I say, three phases. Uh, this picture says four, so we can look at that. Basically, in the cell's life, it's going to live um, in different phases before it can divide. So, um, so in the S phase is where we can start. Sure, why not? So in the S phase is where um, it's synthesis. And the DNA is synthesizing. The DNA is copying itself. Um, and then... Let's look and see what happens. 
So the chromosome are forming, they're splitting in half. Then we go to G2 phase. The G2 phase is growth two or gap two. Time is being spent actually for the cell to grow in size in preparation for mitosis. The first stage of mitosis is prophase. And in prophase is where the um, DNA is going to organize itself and turn itself into chromosome. And there are the chromosome, those X's. The chromosome move to the middle of the cell and that's metaphase. The next phase is going to be anaphase where the chromosome, these spindle fibers are pulling the chromosome apart. Anaphase is apart and it's pulling it apart and stretching the chromosome away from each other so that the same amount goes here and the same amount goes here. That's anaphase. Then eventually we have um, a process called telophase and telophase is where um, two nucleus are formed. So if you look at the chromosome, they're actually going to turn into um, just pure DNA again and then you have two new cells and then it starts over at G0 phase. G0 phase is um, gro not growth yet. G1 is like the phase where the cell grows first and it happens before the cell is ready to go to the S phase where it's going to synthesize and replicate the DNA. So basically the cell spends more time going through G1, G0, G1, S, G2 than it does in mitosis. And mitosis only is nuclear division. Mitosis is not really cellular division. The cell cycle here is cellular division. All right, um, mitosis, like I said, nuclear division, not cell division. Prophase, this is just an overview of what I just showed you. Prophase, the DNA is pulled apart and organized into chromosome. Metaphase, chromosome, those X's are lined up in the middle of the nucleus and they're preparing to divide in half. Anaphase is chromosomes move to opposite ends of the nucleus. And then telophase, two new nuclei are formed. Then there's something called cytokinesis where uh, the cytoplasm actually splits the new nucleus, I mean the new cell membrane forms around the cells and then you have two complete new cells. Remind me to tell you about PMAT and the way that you can remember the phases of mitosis because I think that might help you um, when you're processing the stages of cell division.